Alright, I've got something here. It's uh, something a little different. I bought a generator for the house because uh, the storms have just been getting worse and worse. And uh, I bought something that would run the whole house. And uh, I researched this and uh, everything I read about it was good. And I had everything up front that I needed. And I got Mike here. Mike is actually a generator serviceman. And uh, he actually likes it. Uh, what kind of features? Show, show what kind of features it has up here, Mike. Well, on the front panel, uh, really the, the, the nicest thing about it is the, the, the little information display here. So there's a, a little bar graph that will indicate the percentage of load. And you got a bar graph for fuel level. And then in, in the digital readout here, it'll give you remaining runtime. So the, it, it'll, it'll estimate based on the current load what the remaining runtime is uh, for fuel wise. And then uh, it gives you the load in, in kilowatts, which is handy as well. It, you know, it is just you know similar to the bar graph, but it's, it's just handy to see an actual number. Uh, it gives you the fuel level and the output voltage, and it also gives you the total runtime hours on the thing. So that's handy for maintenance. Um, you know what is nice, Mike? It also has three ways of starting. You know, it has a push button start here, and then if your battery's dead, it has a battery in there. Yeah, it's electric start, and you've got to back up a manual rope right, start over here. Right, rope start here. And for somebody that don't want to yank on that or push on that and wants to start it from the window, it has a remote. Okay. And the battery, it has a battery in there and uh, a place for a trickle charger, and they give you that too. Yeah, that's that's really nice as well that you just plug your charger into the front panel instead of right. having to take a back cover off and, and plug in back there. That's, that's handy. So. Okay. And also, show them how the handle works to, to tow oh, it yeah, around. It's, it's got wheels handle. back here. So and then it's got that, that handle, comes out, and you yeah. lift it, and you just roll around like a heavy kind of, suitcase. Yeah, kind of like a suitcase. Thing. It does. It weighs about 100 pounds. Yeah, that's some weight. Especially if it has fuel in it. But anyway, I'm tickled silly with it, Mike. And, and we started it and ran it for the first time. And Mike was here when I, when I took it out of the box. I still got the box, and it's only about two weeks old. And uh, after Mike left, you know, I, I uh, started it up. Had a little dirt bike here. He wanted to see how it ran. And we tried to start it. It wouldn't start, Mike. Okay. It just kept running, running, running. And when I was researching this two years ago, I wasn't I wasn't researched two years ago. I was just researched a month ago. But I was looking at videos, and a video from two years ago said it had a problem with the choke. And before I bought it, I said, well, they had to fix that by now, you know. But uh, what happened? I tried to start it, wouldn't start. Okay. So uh, we're going to see if it starts now, and we'll show you guys how how you can fix that. Anybody that tried going through the warranty and stuff, they say it's useless. You know the the service on this and uh, all the technical support is useless. Mm. You know, they're, they're, okay. they're no good at all, so. All right, let's uh, try and start it. All right, well, let's turn. It's the, pretty easy. Yeah, turn the fuel on. Turn and let, the fuel on. Let that trickle for a couple minutes. I mean, it's gravity feed to the mm -hmm. carburetor, so. And when we shut it down, we turned that fuel off and let it run out. So. Right, that's, an, uh, that's another nice little feature, and I, I've seen some of these where the fuel is actually the fuel switch is also the ignition switch. So when you turn the switch to off, it kills it. It kills the ignition, and that leaves your carburetor full of fuel. Mm -hmm. So this is nice. You can just turn this off, and it's only fuel, so it'll actually just stall. So we should have fuel in there now. Okay. So flip that switch on. It's been about uh, three weeks since I had it running. Yeah. So we got battery power there. Efficiency mode is turned off. They want you to start it up at, at rated speed. Okay, and all all the instructions are on here. If uh, you know you're you're not that well versed in, in engines. So okay, well, let's give it a try. Look at that! And it shuts itself off. It should have started. Hmm. Let's try it again. Brand new, right out of the box. Well, am I doing it correctly? Yeah, I think no, it's, you are. It's just push and release, right? Right. Yeah, you don't have to. And here, it. here's the, the the key start. Try that. Okay. Overload. You get a flashing overload light. Mm -hmm. Is that what you saw last time, Bill? A little flashing overload light. Yep. So, if we cycle the control power, let's give it a couple. Give a couple more seconds to see if uh, maybe the fuel bowl didn't fill up. Well, I, s I smell raw fuel now, so. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Well, let's give it a reset it there. 
All right. All right. Before so. we flood it, let's uh, turn it sideways and, and take the side panel off. Okay. All right. See, now you shouldn't have to do this with a brand new machine, Mike. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't be happy if I bought it. I actually pay, a, it, these, these sold for $1,000, and I bought it through Lowe's. I had the 5% off, so I got like 50 bucks off. Okay. And I think since then they've, uh, they've lowered the price of these, but still. A thousand bucks, and then if it was if it was raining out here in a, in a thunderstorm, I wouldn't be happy. No. And like I say, all the reviews you read on this, uh, you know, the service service department sucks. So you might as well just fix it yourself. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I smell the fuel now. So what's what's the issue? Is it the issue that the choke doesn't come off, or it doesn't uh, engage? Because it smells like it's flooded. We don't take that. Yeah. Off. Right here, Mike. Got another one? I got this one down. No, that's one up here. This one up here is in. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, but let me just should have put wing nuts on this thing. Yeah. Alright, now let me show you. Bill, little Bill went and uh, did it. There's in here somewhere. Stick your finger on it, Bill. Exactly where it was at. Let me see screwdriver. This is your choke right here. So what you need to do is do that. Open it up like that. Okay, so it was closed. closed. Well, no, it's it actually, was open. Yeah. Well, whatever it was is whatever. It, right. I don't know how well you guys could see that, but uh, all right, see if it starts now. Oh, yeah, it starts right up. Now, he, now he's turning it off. Turn the choke off. Ah, so the choke is engaged. All right. And let's see the front panel. Explain to him what's going on here, Mike. Well, let's see. So, you got your fuel level here and your load level. Let's turn. Uh, we'll leave the efficiency mode off for right now. Cycle through it. So, your power kilowatt is zero. We're not powering anything. Fuel level in liters, six and a half liters of fuel. Output voltage is 124. It's not bad, you know, it's less than, uh, it's around maybe 55, 60 decibels. Yeah. But shut it off, Mike. Alright. So, like I said, I'm tickled silly with the whole thing, but what good is it if it ain't going to start when you need it to, Mike? Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty troubling, actually. I'm not, I'm not at all happy with that. So right now the choke is off. So yeah, of course it restarted because it was because hot. it's warm, yeah. yeah. So the choke's not turning on. That's. I wonder if it's uh, actually a physical issue or if it's an electrical issue. Hmm. That's something. It is. Does it look like something you could actually put a piece of wire on and... and yeah, you probably could. And send it out through the machine, but... Well, I mean, you'd have to be a piece of stiff wire because you'd want right. to pull it, the choke, and then push be able it to control and it. shut it off. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but you like to do it on its own. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's to spend a thousand dollars. Paid for. Right, right. I mean, and and what what are the people that that aren't mechanically inclined do, right? Yeah. They're shit out of luck. Right. Yeah. They yeah uh, they. Oh, I almost cursed. Yeah. Sorry about that, tubes. Yeah, they have to take it back. So that's it. That's the main reason for me doing this uh, video is so you guys know that if you see this and you're interested in it, know that you're not going to get any support from uh, Westinghouse. But other than that, that if you're if you're wanting to deal with that choke issue, then uh, it's a pretty decent little machine. Yeah, I mean it, it, it ran your house pretty well. Um, it wouldn't start 
it wouldn't start your window air conditioner. See, it's an inverter type generator, mm -hmm. so it doesn't handle inrush loads very well. So the startup of your compressor on, on that window AC, it, it wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But it handled the microwave, it handled your lighting, handled the blower for your heater, and um, you know pretty much everything else in the house you wanted to run. Right. Uh, refrigerators, but um, you know hard inrush loads, mm -hmm. uh, inverter generators don't take that too well. So, I mean, you, we, you, if you put a soft start on that window AC, it might do it. Right. Um, but well, that's that's also pretty big. I mean, that might be ten thousand. It's not. It, a, yeah. Yeah, it's not like a five or six thousand. So. Yeah. It might, it might have run a little one, but. Yeah. So it, it's good for. Uh, I mean, this is one twenty volt only, so it's good right. for, you know, small to medium size one twenty volt loads. Mm -hmm. Well, it's meant for RVs, Mike. It has the RV thing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it just has, if, yeah. you, if you want to use the plugs. Most RV air conditioners are what? Right. Like three or 4,000 BTU. I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but fairly small. So. But some people are probably saying, well, just leave the side cover off. But that's that's what makes it quiet. Yeah. You take that, that off and, that, and the thing's loud as heck. Right. That does defeat the, the, defeat the idea of right. why you paid $1,000 for an inverter generator. Right. You know? So, I mean, it, what is it? It's uh, 3,700 rated running watts and 4,500 right. peak watts. So, like I say, it ran everything in the house except the the air conditioner, the the house air conditioner. And, uh, but anyway, that's 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 the main reason I want to do this. Just just to give these guys that are looking for a generator a heads up. Right, buyer beware. Right, buyer beware. But other other than that choke issue, uh, I'm happy with it. Yeah, hopefully, it's... hopefully Mike can fix that because, like I say, he's a a service man and uh, they always come up with some kind of fix. Mm -hmm. So that's it. All right, thanks for helping me out, buddy. No problem. All right. Anybody buys these, good luck. All right. Enough of this.